there was just it was just full of of the funny people. Uh, uh, Michael Keaton was there, uh, and uh, Dennis had written. A, 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 a Dennis and Larry Miller had written something, and we had a table read, and nothing ever became of it except I became great friends with Lovett, and my son wrote the short Last Day Foundation, and I kept thinking, "Are you nuts? You really want me to do this?" And uh, they really did, and they, we pitched it to John, and he said, "Sure." And uh, it was a lot of fun. But uh, well, in, 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 in that ca- in that case, let's skip ahead a little bit. I, I still have a few more things to ask you about uh, uh, Borat, but uh, since we've been talking about it, let's not keep people in suspense. Uh, folks, here's a little clip from uh, the short uh, parody film that Ken did with John Lovitz. It was directed by uh, Ken's son, Aaron Davidian. It's called Last Day Foundation. Take a look at this. Hi, Jennifer Saunders here. Welcome to the final day of this week's series. I'm here with the representative of the Last Day Foundation, Mr. Brant Hollister. Thank you, Jennifer. Our goal at the Last Day Foundation is to make young people's dreams come true. Well, the terminally ill ones, of course. And today, our fortunate unfortunate will meet his idol, veteran character actor, Ken Davidian. Who? Hey, Jimmy. We have just received a very special video message from your favorite actor. (coughs) Hey, Johnny! I heard you're a big fan. Huh? Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy! I heard you're a big fan, so I want to invite you to come to sunny Hollywood to spend the day with me. Hey, hey. Hey, hold on. Okay. To do. Very easy. I want to invite you to Sunny Hollywood to spend the whole day with me. So come on down, baby. We'll see you. We're gonna have a great time. Hey, this kid better not die on me. Only happened once. Ever since I saw him in Gilmore Girls, I knew he was gonna be a star. He is so funny, hairy, and fat. I can't stop laughing. (laughs) He's so funny, he puts me in stitches. Literally. You want to see the scar? (laughs) Um, You can see the rest of The Last Day Foundation, the clip, on YouTube. Just search either Last Day Foundation or search Ken Davidian. Um, And the rest of it, it gets even funnier. And there's a scene uh, shot outside of one of... uh, Ken's restaurants. Uh, if you if you pay strict attention there at the end. Um, all right, let's let uh, Ken. Let's come back to uh, Borat for just a couple minutes b- uh, before we take a break. Uh, you mentioned this this almost slipped by me. You you mentioned that uh, there was a stunt coordinator for the uh, wrestling scene in the uh, hotel room. Uh, what exactly does a stunt coordinator do to um, uh, coordinate two naked men wrestling around a hotel room? Most of the time, he had his eyes covered. <laughs> so, not much got done. No, you know the uh, uh, the lamp that we threw and a uh, 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 couple of the things that's required by the SAG that somebody's there and and make sure that, you know, like they know that they showed us how to flip and all of that stuff. So, actually, <laughs> after the whole thing was done, we were getting dressed, and the stunt coordinator left. So thank you very much, goodbye, and shook hands. And he left, and then he came back about 15 minutes later and gave me a stunt coordinator's uh, baseball cap because he said I was so great. How do you like that? <laughs> now, how, how does one's family react uh, to something like that? Okay, when, we were, uh, when it was screened at, at uh, Fox, my two kids were with me, and uh, they're both, in, you know, in their in their twenties, uh, uh, late twenties. Uh, and after the whole thing was over, there was a clip that Larry Charles put in there that was part of a, a, a movie that was called The Making of Borat. And uh, we had a director and everything, and a guy went with us everywhere uh, and talked to us before. 
what was going on. So uh, somewhere out there, there is this movie, The Making of Borat. Hmm. And uh, they came to me and they put the camera in my face. So well, we're gonna, you're going to run naked? And I, that's when I said, listen, guys, really, you don't want me to do this. It's, it's not very attractive. Are you sure? And, and at least my, ch- my two sons saw that I tried to get out of it. Then at the and and then we told my wife he's running naked in the film, and when you tell people he's running naked in the film, they think to themselves, well, this is a studio film and there's censors and you know, okay, he's running naked. He's not really running naked. He's just running naked. It's movie thing, right? So I took my wife to the premiere, and she saw me running naked, and she (laughs) turned around. And this is in Chinese theater. Damn, am I glad you didn't break your hip. (laughs) And I thought, okay, man, we have, because we were worried about my medical condition, you have completely tuned out the fact that I was running naked, and now I have been seen naked by everybody. She just tuned it out, was only worried what happened to your hip? Because I had a hip replacement three months, two and a half months before we started shooting. Oh, wow. So well, they were like, they were always aware of it. Like when we were running to the ice cream truck, it, uh, we, I remember one time we were running middle of the night, and uh, uh, they said, are you all right? Are you all right? And they, you know, they would only do so, so much. Uh, but I got through it, and it was great. I never had a problem, but that's what she was worried about. Jeez. Well, I promise you, uh, no more naked wrestling questions. Let me ask you this last Borat question, and we'll move on to things that are more current. Do you think we'll ever see a Borat sequel? I don't know. It's not up to me. If it was up to me, you would. Okay. It's not up to me. I, and if it was up to Murdoch, you would. And if it was up to Fox, you would. So uh, I think that production thinks that it would be too difficult to do. I, I don't know. I don't agree with that. Mm. All right. Well, let's change gears a little bit here. Um, Ken, you, uh, you appeared not too long ago in an episode of what is one of my favorite shows, uh, NBC's Chuck. And I wondered if you could tell us, uh, the, the, the many Chuck fans out here, anything uh, interesting from the set or about the show's stars, anything about being on that? Well, I liked everybody on it. The, uh, uh, this, the, the actual Swedish girl, uh, Sarah, I believe her name is, uh, right. she's very good friends with uh, uh, my PR girl. And uh, it was really like a lot of fun. I think the worst part about it is that I died. And that was the, the whole concept. It was like a, a weekend at Bernie's when it was discussed to me. It was, you know, you're going to die and they're going to take you out and uh, you got to go limp. And I, you know, I told her, this is a, you know, this is the, the second film I went limp in. Uh, <laughs> and I tell these people, you don't realize it may look funny, but whoever I'm going limp with better be strong. And it's Zach and, and, and uh, uh, his partner, to I mean, I could tell that the, the strain they were having to try to keep me up. But it was a lot of fun because uh, I got shot. Uh, I ran around upstairs, and, and we got shot at. So it, it, it was a lot of fun. And i got to tell you, Zach has been uh, truly uh, a, a, a great guy, a polite, wonderful young man. You know, every time I see him everywhere... Hi, Ken. How are you? He's really, you know, it's very unusual because sometimes uh, 